Hello, and thank you for coming. Welcome, welcome. Today, I believe today is the day that all the people who paid like $100 for Starfield can play it early. All the streamers and stuff are going to be starting to play it today. Thank you all for coming to stream, even though you could be watching someone play Starfield. I unfortunately got the, uh, the cheap version of the game, so I'll play it on the 6th itself. I don't think I'm going to stream it, because if I stream it, I'd be limited to only playing it while I'm streaming, but I won't play it all the time. Anyway, today, we're going to continue Day 15, Slime Development. Yeah! So last time, we had managed to get uh, quite a few levels finished uh, in our, our little thingy thing, and that was great. We, we fiddled around with some of the ice mechanics and scripts and stuff like that because we were having some issues and we got some stuff working. And today, ooh, we're on level 38, 39, and 40 are the ones that we're going to be working on. Maybe even going into the 50s. Who knows? However, we go to our screen here. We can see. Dun, da, da, da. This is the stuff we have. Now, I was thinking about it. Uh, well, I, I wasn't thinking about it, and that's why there's no extra levels here to build. However, we do have uh, enough to finish off 8, 9, and 10 here for World 4. And after we do that, uh, all of our levels are going to incorporate a red slime who's going to be chasing the player. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, and we'll just kind of do our thing, you know? Um, yeah. Also, I did look into um, the whole colorblind colors and stuff like that. And I honestly... I'm not sure if it's okay or not with the current level that I have looking at the assets here because I found like an article that said for for colorblind reasons colors uh, like red green blue and yellow are fine so I think since I have yellow block green background red background blue background I think we're fine, and then, I don't know. I think for the colorblind stuff, um, it, it's less important since I don't have things that are like overlapping one another, you know? Um, I just have the background and then the, the characters that are on top of the background, right? Um, I don't have like Uh, clear, transparent stuff that's overlaid on other things. Like if you think about a first-person shooter um, where you can enable colorblind settings from like red and blue to other colors, sometimes you have like the red and blue like flag checkpoints or enemy markers um, in front of or behind other things, which could cause some issues, I guess, since it's not really like you, you just don't see the color at all. You see a different color instead. Is how colorblindness works for the most part. And yeah, so we'll still be able to see things. It just might not be the right color, which I think is fine. It's just a matter of if certain things just blend in with the background of other things, you know. But I think we're okay. At least from what I saw, I don't know. It's really hard to tell if you're not colorblind, if something is going to work or not. Um, at least for me. So, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll figure that out later. Anyway, past that, I feel like we just heard this song because it was the intro. Let's, let's skip this song. Okay. Ah, where to begin? Where to begin? Well, let's bring back our, uh, our little up-to-do thing here. So, 
We can time pushing blocks across ice while attack towers shoot across the ice path. We can make a bunch of depositors or something. Oh, that's a great uh, prompt. Uh, something where you need to move blocks through portals since we haven't used many portals. A really great descriptor right there too. A puzzle where you need to move blocks to get an attack tower to shoot it. Uh, shoot at a sealed off tunnel exit. What? What? A puzzle where you need to move blocks to get an attack tower to shoot at a sealed off tunnel exit. Maybe add mirror blocks that you can rotate with F that change the angle of the projectiles. Okay, that would involve making a new block. And uh, we could maybe do that. I don't know. Okay. A level where a block is being transported on a conveyor belt, you need to reach a certain point before the block reaches there. If you don't, the level resets. You need to reach a pressure plate that flips the conveyor belt and moves the block to where you can push it. Okay. That one is similar to our uh, previous level where we made a... Uh, it was level here. It was similar to this level where we uh, push a block across here and it has uh, pressure plates under here? Hold on. Why aren't those pressure plates visible? Ah, that's, that's a good catch to have here right now. So it should be uh, this and then that. Let's, let's grab all the pressure plates. I'll just do this to all of them. Order layer one. There we go. Good catch right there. Um, oops. Yeah, the, uh, the pressure plates were below the ice level, so we had to change the order in the layer in order to get them to show back up here. All right. I think we will go ahead and do the uh, pushing blocks across ice while attack towers shoot across an icy path. So, I guess first, let's go ahead and uh, put our spawn point up here, as usual. Our end level point, I'm going to go ahead and just put it down here. Why not? Ladder tile map, place that there. Grab this. Okay. And so, we want some attack towers. So, we could place them every two, like this, and then have the attack towers firing at, let's see, this one would fire two, we'll go up. This one will go, uh, well, they're all going to go up, so let's just change that real quick. The direction is going to go up. First tower is going to fire at a rate of 2, force of 3. The next one is going to fire at a rate of 2, force of 4. And the middle one is going to fire at a rate of uh, 3, force of 5. Then the next one will fire at a rate of 3, force of 4. Just to kind of change them all up. We'll, we'll see if it can be done afterwards. Um, and then we'll go back down to a rate of two, take a three, that's fine. So let's grab a couple of ice blocks here. Uh, is the end, and we move right is what we'll do here. And then once we have that one block made, we'll just kind of go across here. And that one's going to be the end. And off and right. Okay. Then let's get a little pressure plate. Probably the best thing to do here. And we're going to have it spawn a destroyer block. One object is going to ignore destroyers. Maybe no exit trigger. Um, and then we're going to move its 
block spawn point down to here. And then we'll just hit play and see how it goes. I just want to see if we can even get a, uh, a block to go across here. Not like that, that's for sure. Not like that. Oh, oh, nope. Surely if I just brute force it, one's got to win, right? Surely one has to get through, right? We've gotten close. <gasps> one got through! One got through. Oh my god. It took a minute, but one got through. It's a miracle. Wow. Okay, well it can be done. I don't have to edit anything in this map then. Okay, easy peasy. There's the level. Done. I don't know if there's a way to like see and then time it. If this one goes, Holy shit. What? So we want to go right now. No. Right. Now. No fucking chance. Okay. Oops. Well. Well. I got a an error when I get hit by a projectile here. Ha. Huh. I guess that was just something else then. So, let's see if I can replicate this. So it looks like if you just push it across when the first projectile is like roughly centered, you'll get one across at some point. It just matters that the other one's lining up for it too, so. The next one, go. Next one, go. Next one, go. Yeah, that's literally it. You just gotta wait for uh, one of the, the first one to fire a block and it gets to the uh to the middle like right here and then you can push it across and have to really worry about the other ones because that's the timing for at least one set of the other other like releases so interesting interesting at least for that path now, it will differ if we put, like, multiple different paths down here, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So what we need to do now is figure out why we're pushing a, a block across the, uh, thing here, right? Uh, I think it is so we can destroy a movable block. Or immo immo if I could talk, an immovable block right there. And then we're also going to take this. Go ahead and extend it all the way over to here. We'll do an end cap right there. Like that. Okay. A player can just leave through that little area there. That's one of the, uh, the things we're doing. Now if we copy the ice, and I'm once again going to create an empty called ice that we can literally just put the ice into. 
Because if I do not, we're just going to start getting filled up with ice here. Okay. Excellent. So, pushing an immovable block over here will cause that one to get destroyed. Great. Uh, we also need a way to protect our powers against the player just pushing a destroyable block um, and hitting them, right? If they just push a destroyer block and destroy the towers, uh, the game, game ends, right? So we're going to do that. And... <clears throat> we can just add little nubs here for like no real reason. We can go like this and make them like that. I could, I could, I could. Okay. Let's do that then. And then I think let's get Just all across here, we'll do that, that, and that. All right, here we go, we have our little area there. And then, we can just continue to replicate this ice. One through nine, and it was 10. Okay, so we'll copy that, paste it, paste it, paste it. That way it's uh, just a nice, right? Okay. Hmm. Maybe I, maybe I do just get rid of that, hold on. Let's make it so the player can just walk through here, right? But the thing is, they need to destroy blocks that are in the way of them getting through this little area, right? That's that's the plan, right? So let's take this immovable block. No, I didn't mean to zoom in there, my bad. We're going to take this immovable block, and we want it to be up here instead, right? So we'll do that, and then we're going to add a like this that'll prevent them from there and then we're also going to want to add more uh, stuff over here so let's grab this all right so we'll have another movable block here I guess through it why not I'll be fine Let's move the ice up here. Collapse that all together. All right. So yeah, we have the the ice, the immovable blocks. Dotty dotty dotty. Um. However, now I want to extend the ice path, at least this particular one. So we're just gonna take this block and, and move it um, a little bit here and then I'll just copy another one of these little ice blocks that way we don't have to redo the thing um, although for these top ones we do need to All of these have to be is end because they can go up um, and they can all move down. There we go. Now if we select any one of these we can see it can go every direction except for up because up is the end for all of them. Easy peasy. Okay. So this one is going to be the, the new end for, for that path and then we can have a another immovable block here that it has to destroy. And we can have 
a little thing like this. Now, what's to stop the player from just going across like a destroyer block after they destroy one? I don't know. We really need like a player resetter. That'll uh, stop the player from doing that. Maybe we make one. Something that just real quickly resets the player's location so they can't bug out puzzles like this. Well, we'll, we'll consider that later. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so now we have that. They probably want to go down just one more here again. We can go over. And so let's grab this nice block of time. Cop face that, go over there. Then I can grab this ice block. I'm gonna move it over to here. We're gonna copy this block a couple of times, like that. And we'll put one more removable block here. Which then we can have do this, that, that, and that. Or I could even just do that and then that piece okay and then we can get a corner here and go boop 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 there we go kind of like that okay well that's not all So, what we'll do here is let's also add a gate here. And we will change its color. Then we'll have a destroyer block up here. I just need to get in and just push into that. Easy enough, right? Although, I could also get a, a pitfall here. We can use this little space here for something. Okay. And then we will take a little high the eyes so I can just see what I'm dealing with here a little bit better. Okay. Then we're gonna grab this guy and put him here. We're gonna grab a portal. Portal A, I'm gonna take up to here in this little hole where there's just nothing. B is gonna go over to here. B's output is gonna go up here. And A's output is going to go down here. That way you can just go in through here, push the block into the pit to seal it up. Then you can get the um, destroyer block and push it down. Because if you use the destroyer block first, you won't be able to get that gate to open. So we'll just do that. Very simple. It just adds a little bit extra time for the player to, you know, use. Okay. So, that is that. Um, anything else that I want to add to the left side, maybe? Not particularly. I think that we're good. Okay, so real quick, let us go and we're going to make a new block real quickly. open with paint.net and we're just going to use the block void 
block for this and we're just going to change the colors on it a little bit. So I think to match the colors of the slime we'll be using a, uh, a dark green here. Oosh. And then a little bit of a lighter green on the inside like that. There we go. Okay. Let's rename this to Player Void. Okay. And now we just need to go to our Assets folder, copy in our Player Void, change the things here, and multiple apply, edit the sprite. It's going to be. 32 by 32, slice it, apply it, and we're done. Okay. We're going to grab all these and put them out here, though. We're going to create an animation called Player Void. Okay. And we want this one to be at the character level. Doesn't really matter which we choose. Let's check the, uh, the animation of this. Actually, we can just open up this block void going at 8. Okay, so 8 is the one we have that on. Perfect. Then we can do this. And you know what I think we, we could do, rather than making an extra script, we could just take the block void script and edit it a little bit, make the player void. So we just add block void here. And I want to make sure this is unscaled time for the update mode here. Okay. Let's go to prefabs. And we will really quick edit this. We want to make, first of all, a serialized field called boolean called is player void. And on trigger enter, we want to real quickly check. Um, before we do anything, we want to, well, first let's just get the string because we're going to want to use that anyway. We want to check if is player void equals true then I want to jump it to here and we want to say if object equals player else return because obviously, if it is a player void, we don't want anything else to interact with it, just the player, not even the enemy slime, just the player. Um, if it is the player, we want to also return, because if we don't, it will also just progress through here. Um, so we'll be doing that. However, if it is the player, we want to get a serialized field spawn point. I'm going to copy that line, paste it down here, and we can go on point, and what we'll do is we will take collision.gameObject.transform.position equals spawnpoint.transform.position. Just move them back to where they were. Um, however, we may also need to reset their um, up here. So I believe we just need to do reset POS. Well, we'll do collision.gameObject.get component player move dot reset POS right there. And I should reset them having any like movement or anything like that. I'll just reset them to zero so that they can start moving around again. Easy peasy. Okay. So with that, we don't have to create a new script that is just a couple lines of code, and we can just use the code that we had previously. Let's just add a player void 
into it. And I'm just going to tick that box and I'm going to make a uh, nice little prefab of it. Because even if I were to put a spawn point in there, it's not going to match up for the spawn point for the level we do copy later. So we'll write the spawn point over to here now. And we're going to put them at the very end of the, uh, the trek here. I was thinking we could just put them all like right here in this line, but then the player could also just go down and over and then skip these two, for example. Um, or if we just put them like all right here, if the player want to cross share, it would do that, but then they can just go down here and then only destroy this one. But this really stops them from going like every single direction, right? Excellent. So now, let's first of all, assign all of our stuff. Um, we don't have to worry about assigning block voids uh, or this, the player voids into the block void section because the block or the player voids, they don't matter. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and we will get a movable block and a destroyer block set up in our player respawn area. We're going to create an object called block spawns. I don't know why it decided to get made there. Whatever. We'll copy a couple of times. So we have two of them. The first one is a movable block, so we need to make sure the first spawn goes onto the movable block. The second one is the destroyer block, so we put that there. Okay. Now, since we do have a destroyer block here, and we are dealing with destroyer blocks in other places, we do need to, of course, uh, put all that stuff up here. So, first we want to do the pressure plate right there. We don't have any levers, but we do have a pitfall. We also have some portals. Or just a portal, I suppose. We have a bunch of attack towers, so we need to get all of them, just in case the player is able to somehow get a destroyer block in there and destroy them it could be possible i really don't think that it's going to be but you never know when it comes to people playing games right we have one gate that we need to get in here we don't have any cages but we do have immovable blocks They're all over here and i do believe that is everything that we need to get assigned we have the portal the movable block the pressure plate the pitfall the gate the attack towers yada 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 Excellent. Okay. All that's been set up. Also, we have a GUI error. Animator player void you have used is not valid. Animations will not play. I don't understand what that means, though. You are pushing more GUI clips than you are popping. Make sure they are balanced. Again, I don't understand what that means. We're just going to clear it, and if the error comes up again, we'll look into it. Oh. Okay, dialogue for this one. Welcome to your next experiment. This time, I've introduced a new uh, object to get in your way. See those green You don't want Let's see. see those green things. You should figure out how they work. And that's all we're gonna say to the player. I won't spoil the surprise. And then we want to say that you should start sliding things across the ice. There we go. All right, so that's all we're going to do for map 4.8. Let's go ahead and play test before we make a prefab. That way we can tell for sure. Okay. Like the 
before we launched it when it was... Oops, that one's not going to work. Boom. Let's at least get this one knocked out, right? Go! Yeah, boy. Okay. We have that one done. That's good. How about this one? Can we use the same plan from here? It'll really be easier since it's further away. No shit. Wait, what? Level reset. Ice reset. E block. Troyer block. Wait, what? This shouldn't be D block. This should be ice. This could potentially be a really frustrating level. What am I trying to do? I want to see if I can like pop multiple at a time. Go! Oh, so close. So very close. Well, that was going on its way. Didn't mean nothing though. Let's go. You can do it. You know, the play might be actually. I get a bunch of destroyer blocks lined up and ready to go. And I just one at a time just push, 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 push. The other destroyer blocks down below would like secure them, right? But like stop the projectiles from hitting them. Ooh, that one's really close there. Okay. Go. 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 Bullshit. At least we got two out of them. Yeah! Woohoo! There we go, baby! So you can hit multiple with just one uh, destroyer block and it will. Awesome issues. Cool. Good to know. If we can get them close enough where I can like just push people at a time, I can just go like boop and then boop. And if we oh man. So close. Of course we can't do that for the bottom one. Let me just see what the bottom one is. Beautiful. Because I don't think it is going to be. I feel like this, this second projectile is always gonna come out and destroy the destroyer block. Yeah. You hate to see it. Okay. I'm gonna have to adjust the, the fire rate on these then. Hmm. Okay, so the, the second attack tower of this one. Let's unlock that first of all. Um let's change the time to attack to five. 
Same with the other middle one, this one. Time to attack's gonna be five. Let's see how that changes the projectiles here. So let's get them firing first of all. Okay, so the first one we need to check if it's possible or not is the, the bottom one. Because uh, it sort of just... Oops. Oops. Oops! Well, at least we have the reset working. Next one, two, go! Yeah, I, I hit the uh, corner down there, so it... It's a little block. Okay, ready, one, two, go! I fucked up! I fucked up! Okay. I think if I wait for them all to fire right now. Oh, oh, oh! And he did it. He did it, lads. Okay, it is possible. He's gonna take a hell of a lot. And. Okay. Go. You can do it! You can do it! Oh, oh he's done it, lads. You know what this reminds me of? Um, what's that Olympic sport where they push stuff across ice? Um, it's like the only Olympic sport that I care about. Why do I like not remember the name of it? I feel like it starts with an S, yeah? They push like a little discs of ice across the snow, across the ice, and then, uh, not little discs, like little discs across the ice, and the two people are out in front, like, brushing the ice to make it, like, curve or turn or whatever. Oh, he's done it, lads. He's fucking done it. And now we just gotta avoid the projectiles. Get our asses down here. First through the portal. Seal up the hole. Come down here. Whee! Curling! It's called curling! Ah, oh, that's the sport I was thinking about. This is just like curling, except you have things getting in your way that are uh, causing problems. So, roughly 30 minutes to beat this one if you uh, actually push it across and hit multiple at a time, which is nice. and. We actually haven't tested whether or not these blocks reset us, so I need to check that out. Um, player voids? On trick render 2D. If player void equals true. If object equals player. I should be the player, right? It's not... Hey, you know why? Holy shit. I, uh, I don't have a hitbox on this. Having a hitbox, um, believe it or not, is, is a very important part of being able to register something being hit or entering an object. I know, I know, weird, weird, but, uh, yeah. Kind of need a hitbox. There we go. We'll just center that bad boy there. Okay. And now just to test the, the player hitbox, or the player void, I mean, we will sprint down here and I'm just gonna, boop. There we go. Nice, it does work, okay. 
We even had a little entering thing at the end. Cool. All right, and that's level four, three completed. Oh, good stuff. Okay. Let's toss that level down here. Oop. We can get rid of this one. Open up four sevens, end level, and I'll laugh that one there. Clap, clap, baby. Okay. Next, four nine. Okay, let's look at our lovely reference sheet here. Timing, pushing blocks across ice while attack towers shoot across the path. Mission complete. Next, just a bunch of depositors or something. This one is going to be evil, but it could also be a time sink. So we can do that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead. And I'm just going to add a little thing right there. Huh? Okay. And let's go ahead and make the exit here. And we will then take the end point, move it down here, and our spawn point will move up there as usual. Let me just double check the spawn point on this, or the end point on this, I should say. Okay, it is down there. I did not remember if I moved it, but I just had to check. Okay. So. Gentlemen, let us begin. We're going to make a bunch of depositors and stuff. So, loop. Okay. <clears throat> So I think what we should do is have a mix of pitfalls, depositors, and we'll be using uh, block voids as well to kind of split up the level to prevent the player from going in, or not the player, the, uh, the, the blocks from coming over. Because we're going to be using pressure plates to have them spawn blocks. And then we're going to be using uh, that to fill the depositor and all that good jazz, right? Okay. Because first, let's put a depositor down here at the uh, the end of the level. That way we can do that. Um, we'll have that there. We'll adjust the, the exact fill points and stuff like that. Let's also go ahead and grab excuse me, a pressure plate. One block. No exit trigger. Um... Okay, then we're going to want this one to spawn movable blocks. We're just going to copy things as we need them here. Okay. So, let's divide this up into multiple slots, first of all. So, obviously, let's go ahead and let's just do a split right down the middle here. That, and then from this one, we'll go up here. And then in here, we will go ahead and have a split over here there so that'll be our, our room progression and now that we've done that we can take our block voids and we can go ahead and just copy paste them here to prevent the player from taking blocks from the previous area into a new area easy enough okay now then let's start with this pressure plate up here and i think in each room we're going to want a pressure plate so let's just go ahead and get one set up in each room so that way we can manipulate 
the beginning spawn point of each of these. So we will get a block to spawn here. Okay. And let's then get not to do that. Let's uh let's copy the depositor. And we will put it in each little thing here, which means I should probably change that and this one. A little bit. Like that, so we can get a depositor there. Okay. Let's go back to that. Copy, paste. Boop, boop. Okay. So what would make this room unique, I suppose? Uh, well, all the depositors and stuff. But. But. Hmm. I don't know why I'm so tired today, man. All right. So we have all those laid out. So now the question, it's just, how exactly do we want to do this? I'm going to put this one here. This pressure plate I'll put here. This pressure plate I will put here. Just to kind of maximize the space we have for all this stuff, right? So I think what we want to do is hmm. I was thinking we could have like actual like blocks in the world that we could use to uh to do things but then I thought we just have a pressure plate that can spawn infinite blocks, so we could just fill up any pitfalls we create. Uh, so that wouldn't really matter at all. Um, so maybe we don't need the pitfall. To be honest, maybe we just leave that one alone. For now, let's also create where all these blocks are going to spawn. There we go, and I can just seal all these up. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yay. Hmm. Mm hmm. Huh. Honestly. What's the point of even using the block voids if the pressure plates are in each room? Let's remove this one. I have an idea for this room that we can use, so it will be interesting. And then what we will want to do is, I guess, just kind of do our thing here, so let's grab a, I'm just going to randomly space a couple of pitfalls around the area here, just to kind of make the player have to fill things up. I think each room will kind of have its own little unique design, where uh, the player has to go about, you know, moving stuff through. So like this one can be uh, converter blocks, for example. We can just do like every two here, like that. So now if the player spawns a block here, they can push it up, over, up, over, up, over, or they can, you know, have it turn into a, you know, movable block thing and cause some issues. I can even, you know, like block off like right there. The player has to go up, over, up, and then they have to decide whether to push it all the way over here, which they cannot. But yeah, they're going to have to go through here. They can't go through here, because this one's going to turn into a... Uh, uh, what you call it? An inverse block. So when I push it onto here, it's an inverse block. They're then going to have to go around, pull it, go around, pull it back, so it turns back into a pushable block, push it up, push it over uh, to do that. 
And then, uh, in this room over here, I feel like I could also put a couple of these here. Just to give the player a little I think they have to at least steal up one or two of these uh, holes here. Probably that one and that one would be the easiest to deal with. Just add those in there. All right. Uh, so that one, we'll just call those feature complete. So for these depositors, I think this one will take, let's just say five. This one, where's that one at? Oh, there's that one. Let's have them each take five. Why not? Five blocky blocks. We might change that one. Uh, depending upon how many blocks we can fit in this area with what I want to do with it. So, I think the plan that we want is to have a pressure plate here. And... What we'll do is we will have a conveyor belt here that's going to be going to the right. Actually, you know what? Not a conveyor belt. Let's use some ice instead. Plus moving, you know. All right, so that's going to be his end. We'll move right. This one is going to be his end. We'll move left. We're going to do. We're going to put a player void here. And here, and here. That way, uh, the player cannot go through and trigger this. They have to push a block across, which wastes a block. Uh, and this particular pressure plate is going to be a one object, which will, I don't know about one object yet. Maybe no exit trigger. It's going to move the block to this. It's going to trigger once. And what it's going to manipulate, I don't know. We shall see. Okay. What I could do is make a little prison here. That? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we can use some conveyor belts. Are we going up? Up, up, and away. Okay. And then we can have this one have a gate here. And this gate we need to change the color of like that, which means this pressure plate here is going to open this gate. One object. Cool. And that gate is going to allow stuff to spawn and do things, right? So we need to get a prefab. Um. First of all, we're going to need a block. Let's put it down here. And then we're going to get a pressure plate, another one. And this one, it's going to also spawn objects, right? Uh, is one object, no exit trigger. Cool. And let's change this area. We're going to spawn the blocks in here. So basically what will happen is the player will come down here, have to move this one, trigger that, 
uh, uh, pressure plate, which will unlock this gate, which will allow them to hit this pressure plate to get all of the uh, stuff that they need to get in to that area. So that's the theme for that one is, is movable block things happening. Um, yes. Okay, and then this room's theme. Ah, oh, what should I do with it? Hmm. Why does clicking... Why does clicking here select this, this text or this depositor? I don't understand. It's odd. It's very really peculiar. Hmm. Okay, anyway, this one. Uh, let us... What do you mean? Is that happening when I pull an object out? Or when I, like, load the level? Am I getting that error? Oh, it won't play. My ass, it won't play. Get out of here. Okay. Anyway. This one. Hmm. What should we do for this one? We've used pitfalls, we've used converters, we've used movable blocks. Really all we have left is... Suppose we could do that. We had a couple of levers here. And then we add a sort of pathway here. Sorry, this one should have been that. Um Okay, and then I guess we'll use more conveyor belts and stuff. Fine, uh, although... Let me... Edit this too. We don't need to have this wall open if we don't need it to be open, right? Go. Okay. So, the player's going to step on this conveyor belt, which uh, we need to probably change the location of the pressure plates. Anything? So it's going to go here. Then we're going to use conveyor belts, which are going to go down to this. So let's go left. We're going to have it center the block. And we need this one to start out at 180. Okay. Let's go ahead and I'm going to copy these down here. There, and 
that's it for the ones that are going to be pointing that way. Okay. So next we're going to go downwards. And that's going to be negative 90. Yes. Okay. Right like that. Okay, and then we want to have a conveyor belt that goes to the right, like this one. And then I'm gonna copy this because we only need one of these blocks that's gonna go up. Okay, so I don't think we need to center the block for this one. I do believe this one needs to center the block. That one will be centered, that's gonna center, that's gonna center right there. And then we're gonna, oh, excuse me, we're gonna place block voids here and here. So essentially what the player has to do is flip these levers in order to um do the conveyor belt thing. Now, I, I actually think if I were to remove a lever, I do believe one lever is able to manipulate uh, multiple conveyor belts. So we want the last two conveyor belts, right? Yes. However, yeah, I can only do one conveyor belt direction. And unfortunately, these aren't facing the same way. Ugh. Fine, I'll use two levers. I was going to have just one lever, so that way you could, like, flip it, and both would turn, and then you'd have to do it again, because they'd go in opposite directions, right? So, like, this one I would have actually pointing down to begin with, but if you flip the lever, this one would turn to the left, that one would flip up, that way you'd have to like really quickly and that when it's onto there flip it again but fortunately it's not gonna not gonna work how i envisioned so this one's gonna be 15. i do believe it's multiple objects is what we're gonna have to do here direction to move is going to be to the left original direction is going to be the right 15 right 15 is that one which is going to go left and then right okay cool then lever number two is going to be conveyor belt 16. Always visible, multiple objects, conveyor belt. Direction to move is going to be down, but it's going to start up. Okay. So with that, I think we have what we want to complete this. So basically, you're going to hit this pressure plate. It's going to spawn a block here, which is going to start going down, because obviously, even if you were to spawn a block and try to move it yourself, you're not going to be able to get it around a corner. The conveyor belts have to do it themselves. And you can just ride down here once it's completed. Which, honestly, this one's so easy. You just got to turn the levers the right way, hit the conveyor belt five times, and then leave. So I actually might take the first depositor and make this one go to, like, 13. Just to make it a nice little... Uh, take it a little longer, you know? Okay. So with that, our preparations are completed. Let's go ahead and go to here. And we will lock this. Boop. So first things first, we need to get a movable block and a block spawn for it. Because there's that one little movable block that is loose out in the wild. There we go. Okay. Uh, we don't have any enemies, so that doesn't matter. We do have some pressure plates right here, so we will grab them and throw them there. We do have two levers. We'll grab those and put them there. We do have quite a few pitfalls. We're going to copy those and put them there. We have no portals, no attack towers. We do have a gate. We have no cages. Uh, the movable blocks, the immovable, 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 
We have some depositors. The immovable blocks. Uh, those do not matter because they can't be destroyed in this particular map. We don't have to uh, you know, touch them at all. <laughs> all right. We have our next level. Let's uh, go in here and we'll say... You know what? <clears throat> to be honest, I'm running out of things to say as you start each experiment. So, how about I regale you with my life's story? Let me just make sure we Gale is spelled correctly. Entertain, amuse, or talk with. Okay. Excellent. I do want to change the location of this box, though, so let me go to the GUI. I think I need to change it by doing this and then this. And then making sure that the dialogue gets within this box here. Okay. Now, if I hit play, let's just see how it looks. A little bit further to the left, I think, and a little bit higher up. that, and then that. How about that? Also, I misspelled things. Love to see it. Okay. Real quick. Um, 475. 130, 905, 235. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, paint, please. I think about paint.net, that's fine too. I just wanted to note down those numbers here real quick. Okay, so now let me just check the dialog box. Looks good. Let me hit play one more time. Okay, looks good. So let's go ahead and hide this dialog box. And I'm gonna real quick open up level 10. And open up its text box and stuff. That way I can change its information here to 475, 130, uh, 905, and three for that one. Okay, and then I can just change the dialog box here to fit within that. Okay. And take that. And hide level 10. Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> and let me, uh, while I'm at it, I might as well do the dialog box for this one as well, this prefab that we'll be using for level 10. Uh, world 5, I mean, whatever. So 475, 130, uh, 905, and 235. Go. Now we just need to change the bounding box for the dialog. And we'll save that. Not that anything uses that prefab, but we'll use it in the future. Okay. So, 
Let's open up. So let's just make this three for now. Then I can do ten like that. Let's see. It all started when I was but a wee lad. Living with my parents. I became fascinated with... This is going to be some stupid, just like, trauma dumping lore nonsense. Not really trauma dumping, but like, he's just going to like start talking about his life, like nonstop, until uh, level 41, when the red slime gets introduced. Magic and magic beasts, such as this. So, I would study them, study magic beasts. Well, such magic beasts were dangerous to be around as a child. Though, it never stopped me from wandering off into the woods to look upon them from afar. Always a curious child, and I applied myself to the magics. I didn't do much playing as a child. Which may have led to me being ostracized. Google! Ostracized. Ostracized from the children in my village. But they were all daft. Muscled heads. Anyway. Filthy farmers' children. Who had not a thought in their minds. So I took to seclusion. And reading anything about magic I could get my hands on. Of course, living in a poor farming village meant that I didn't have access to many books. My mother was an ex-adventurer who had a magic teaching book, but it only touched upon the basics. But I studied it hard, never the best, and quickly mastered all within it. He's really just rambling, like, yeah, um, some of the dialogue is like such a pain in the ass. I then began to save up my little allowance, allowances 
to ask the the traveling merchants to procure me any books on magic. He brought me a few. I poured over them immediately, mastering everything I could. I think we'll end it there for now. That's like 15 lines of dialogue in that one mission. <laughs> I don't even know if it's going to be uh, not enough, but. I don't know if the player's even going to be able to get through here before he gets to, like, line 10 or whatever. Let's just do what we can here. I gotta steal that hole, too. Oh, shit. Get this one down here, then. Still talking. Those fifteen lines of dialogue I just typed might just barely get me to finish the first room. Yep, just barely. <laughs> Holy crap. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. That like guy can really talk, huh? Oops, that's not at all how I wanted to push that, but that actually works, because then I can do this anyway, so... I think we're right. I think I just messed that up too. Yep. Okay, hold on. There we go. The conversion blocks are a little bit iffy when it comes to uh, doing stuff. This is a really great time-wasting level, and I absolutely adore it. Was that just off? Nope, okay, oof. It could be worse. He could still be talking. <laughs> first. There we go. Okay. Uh-oh. God. Oh, Jesus. I really fucked that up. Well, at least I can do this and get those out of there. Well, here's the last two that I need. This uh, might work. There we go. Right, yeah, this looks going to take about five minutes. Nice. Okay. So, I know what I have to do here. Oops, I hit both of them at the same time. There we go. So, one, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh-oh. <laughs> done. All right, done a little over, a little about five minutes. Nice. Incidentally, yes, the player would screw themselves if they did too many blocks there and have to restart the whole level. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Okay, one thing that I want to do to the discussion script here is I want to add one more dialogue to it, which will say, he continues to talk about his childhood. Just in parentheses there. So uh, basically it's like open-ended as it continues onward. Okay, cool. So let's add this to our prefab here. We're then going to open up this guy and level, level nine. Beautiful. Okay. Now for the 10th level of this world, let's go ahead and get down to it. All right, so just a bunch of depositors for that level. Worked out really well. Might be a bit tedious, but at this point, well, it happens. I, I'm really curious, what is the error here? The animate unity, the, the animator controller is not valid. Converted to a prefab. Your imported animations have the wrong rig type for your animator's avatar. To fix this, go to your animation rig, set the animation type to humanoid, whatever else your animation model is. What? I don't have an avatar though. That doesn't matter. Shana. Unity 2D. Well, I think they're just 3D animations. I don't know why. Uh doing that. First, it only costs an editor when an editor loses focus and gets focus again. Unity, total allocation memory is only lower and load has it. Look like it's just a glitch, kind of like that stupid, um, what, what do you call it? The, uh... The graph error we sometimes see? Anyway, the next level, level 10. Oops, let's, let's zoom out on this. There we go. <clears throat> okay, level 39, yeah? Okay. So, or is this level 40? I think this is level 40, yeah? Yeah, this is level 40. Okay. So something where you need to move blocks through portals since we haven't used any portals. I don't know about that one though. Because now that we've actually made some extra levels where we had this level where we push blocks through portals, I feel like that was enough. But this one was also, we just pushed a block through the portal and then it did something. Whereas we could make a room where we push blocks through portals, and they have to follow the block in order to do something, I guess. We could do that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Get a portal out here. The uh, spawn point. We're moving up to the upper left again, as always. Let's go ahead and add our exit down here. Why not? 
There we go. Okay. I'll just slay it. So. I think what we'll do is we shall start off with a couple of portals in a room and kind of go from there. Where did that portal go? Oh, I didn't set the... Uh... Oh, I must have hit empty instead of set as default. I must have hit that instead of that. Whatever. If fine. Oh, that was a good knuckle crack right there. God damn. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna toss these portals um, up here. And I'm gonna create a, another set of portals right here just to get them out of the way. Uh, so I can design the map. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with a little room here. Like this. Like that. So the player will spawn here, and we will give them a pressure plate that spawns movable blocks. I'm gonna select the right thing here. There we go. One object, no exit trigger. Um, and that's what we're gonna do there. And then we'll have each of these portals, portal A, go here, and portal B for the other one will be here, just so they're different colors. Let's make it so it's easier to see which room is going to be going where, how about that, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll split this room into uh, two halves, sort of. Let's grab this, that, and we'll go bloop, 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 bloop. There we go. All right, so this is going to be how it looks. Um, then I'm going to grab a gate, put it here, just like so. Which means we need to change the color of this guy once again. There we are. All right. Yeah, so we'll take uh, portal B. And we're going to put it right here. Portal B's teleport location, we're going to have go right here. And, or I guess Portal B is, should be going up here, to be honest. Portal A should be going over here. There we go. Okay. For the next portal, Portal A will be going over to, let's say, here. Portal A's location should be going over to here. Portal B's location should be going over to here. Now if we just play the game, let's just make sure that they go exactly where I want them to go. We go through here. We go through here. Easy peasy. Next. Okay. And if we spawn a block, we should be able to just push it through, come through as well. Great. And then if we go back through, spawn a new block down here. Push it through, go through, it works, okay. Although I think I will, on this pressure plate, um, remove the exit trigger, because I think the exit trigger also enables, disables the pressure plate light. So we want to do that. We know the portals work fine. Pressure plate works fine, cool. So now, what do we want to do with all of the blocks that we're going to be spawning and moving through this location? Well. First of all, we're going to need to do something to unlock this gate, which we will figure out in a moment. Um, we're going to want either a pressure plate or a lever or a destroyer block to do that. But, but, is there anything else that I can do? That would be interesting. I guess there's only one block that I can move in through portals, right? So it doesn't really matter. I was thinking if I could have an uh, inverse block go into a, a portal. That would be neat. But, nah, 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 nah. Okay, 
So, let's go ahead, and I guess we'll just design this room first. So, what we might want to do is have sort of a, a multi-eared thing happening, where we have to unlock something in this room, or we hit like a pressure plate in this room, which unlocks the thing in this room, we have to do something in this room, which unlocks something in that room. Think of the, uh, um... The double slime room, where one slime had to do something, then the other slime had to do something. Kind of like that. Also, I like how it goes from like a small square, inside of a small square, inside of kind of a bigger square, right? Kind of like we're, uh, we're, we're zooming out as we go. Kind of interesting. Anyway. Okay, so in order to do that, let us first... I put... I just have to go like this, don't I? We can do that, then we can put a gate there. And go ahead and copy this over to. Oh, I said copy, not just take. Yeah, okay. We'll do that, and then we can get a, another one up here, perhaps. We've got to make sure we have enough room to like move stuff through. So once we get out to here, we can take this room and divide it up into a couple of places like this. Then I'm going to have to put this again, aren't I? Like this. Now we can do one more wall down here. Like so, not like so, like so. We need to be able to move the, the block through. Perfect, okay. And so we'll just make gates for all of those. And we shouldn't have to do any more additional work for the walls, so that's fine. We do need the vertical doors now, however. Go, and then let's grab both of those, go to assets, and we will fling that over to there. Okay, so, hmm, we have three rooms here, three gates here, two gates here, that's one, mm -hmm. okay. So let's see, this room opens up that gate, this room opens up that gate, or we could have that gate open and then this room opens up that gate, and this room opens up that gate. So this room would open up that gate, this room would open up that gate, which means the last gate here gets opened through this room, um, essentially. Okay. So, let us, let us. Let's get a pressure plate here. Uh, one object, trigger once. There's gonna be no exit trigger. We're just gonna move the block to this, and it's gonna manipulate horizontal gate number one. Oop, there we go. Okay. But that's a little bit too easy, so let's go ahead and add a couple of pitfalls onto this as well. That the player will have to go through the portal a couple of times in order to hit. There we go. Um, actually, I don't want that to be there, do I? It's my bad. Let's select all of these and we'll just move them over into here. That'd be nice and easy. Okay. So that door, that one. So now we need something in this room that will open up also, I just realized I uh, had a, a straight there rather than a square piece. Great. Okay. So here, um, let's grab this pressure plate here, and <coughs> give me a single object, trigger once, no exit trigger, move block to this. 
And then we are going to take horizontal gate number three. Go. Okay. Should we just surround this one by blocks as well? Huh. I feel like if it's just pressure plates surrounded by blocks, that would get old. Um, so, what if we do something else where perhaps we need If I put another wall here and a gate here, and the block spawns here, I think the player spawns above the block. And then they can push the block. Yeah, they wouldn't have room, would they? Shoot. That is unfortunate. They wouldn't have room to I guess I could move the blue portal up one, so it's in the corner. And then it could spawn in the same spot, and that could work. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's... Actually, wait, I don't want these pressure plates to trigger once. If they just trigger once, they can just tap them once, and then no reason to have a block on them. Okay. So, let me copy another, another gate. <laughs> right there. And then what we will do is we'll take this fourth pull. I think it's... Yeah, we're gonna move that one up a little bit. Or B's location that needs to move down. Or A's location, it's gonna stay the same. Now we can move the block through it. We can push it down to here, get around, push it through here again, or move it over here, push it up there. Exactly what I wanna have happen. Okay, cool. And so this last pressure plate, um, that one's gonna open that one, yeah? We need something to open up that gate, which honestly we might as well just use this room then if that's going to be the case. So let's do it. Copy this one here. We'll just change this one to that one. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Should I do anything else here, though? I think it's fine. Okay. So you come down here, put a block on here, come through here, put a block on there, back through here, seal this area off, put a block on here, which then opens up that gate, so you can then do something here, go through that gate. Okay, so let's put a pressure plate down here. Actually, you know what? Delete that one. I'm just gonna copy the pressure plate so I don't have to keep. So we'll put one here, put one here, put one here. Put one here. And then we will put one up here, I think. There, okay. So for the new pressure plates we've added, this one, we want this one to open up that gate. Yeah? That one opens up that gate. That one opens up that gate. Yes, this one would open up that gate. So which gate is that? Horizontal, is it vertical? Vertical one.
Okay. Next, that one should be opening up the next horizontal one. So I think it's horizontal three, horizontal two. There we go. And then this plate should open up that one, which is vertical one. I guess not vertical one, just vertical without anything on it. And then the last pressure plate should open up the very first gate here. There we go. Okay. Excellent. So we have the, the basic layout for it done. Ah, of where everything is going to go and open and all that good jazz. Whatever. So now we just need to do some stuff that will cause the player to take a little bit longer on it and have to do things, uh, right? Okay. I guess one thing we could do is put an attack tower here that shoots up. I just want to double check. I don't remember if attack towers can destroy gates. They cannot, okay. That'll just cause some inconvenience for the player um, in terms of getting the thing around and whatnot. I think we can also add one down here. Because keep in mind, the player can just block it with a block. So it's not a, that big of a deal, right? Um, however, they have to get down to here. They have to push it against the wall and get it onto this pressure plate, right? So it's a little bit of a tricky trick there. We'll just use those. Um, next, what we could do is... It also has to push it through here, which might not work, but we'll see. Coming down is easier than going up, right? So you might have to push a little bit, get away, push a little bit, get away. Or just push it in the line of sight and wait until it takes it through slowly but surely, right? We'll see what happens. Alternatively, I could switch this one to go to the left instead, which I might do just for the sake of it being nice, right? Let's just be a little nice to the player, I guess. <laughs> I guess we gotta be nice to the player. <laughs> Players. Okay. So, let's do that, and then, I suppose, what we could do then, I could add a depositor here, right like this, you have to like fill this with a couple of them, I'll just leave it at two, we'll see if I like waste a little time like that. And then, I don't really see another place that a depositor could be useful to block a path. So, what we could do I guess let's just add more pitfalls. Like this. And then Add more up here, like that. We kind of force the player to go through multiple times, yeah? Very simple level, but requires stuff, right? And then... We can have a conversion block here, so that if the player goes too far with their uh, movable block, it's going to turn into an inverse block, which gets destroyed. And then we'll have to do something else here, so they can't just block it there. I can also do the same thing here, so they can't just put a block here to block the attack. Because if they do, they can't get further into the room, right? They have to get it down there, move over, push it, push it down, yeah. 
That's dirty. I like it. Okay. You know what? Let's put another depositor here, too. This is only going to take one, though. Okay. All right, I think that's going to be all for this level. Nothing too fancy or anything like that. It's just a simple go here, do here kind of thing. So let's go ahead and assign all the stuff that's going to be resetting every single time that a thing happens. We don't have any levers. Uh, we have portals, but they can't be destroyed, so they don't need to be reset. We have pitfalls. We don't have any levers. We don't have it. We do have attack towers, but again, they aren't going to have anything happen to them, so those are fine. Uh, we have gates. A lot of gates. Uh, we don't have movable blocks. We don't have voids. You have a few depositors here and there. There we go, and then everything else is just fine. Because we don't have any blocks that are just naturally in the world. Everything comes from this block deposit. Okay. And for the dialogue, we'll once again begin the, the, the doctor's rant. So, when I became a Teenager, I had saved up enough to go to the nearby city. Once there, like my mother, I joined the Adventurers Guild and began to take quests. Nothing special at first. Collecting herbs or helping people in the town with cleaning or moving. But as I worked my way up, I could soon take on subjugation. Sub Google! Subjugation? Do you? Yeah. Subjugation. Subjugation. Quests to slay monsters. Without skipping a beat, I took my first quest and went into the forest to find it. It was just a few slimes and I needed to retrieve their cores. So I It was quite easy, given my magical, given my magical knowledge. It was curious, though. What exactly is a monster? Countless scholars have researched them before. Some say it is crystallized mana. Others say it is a sort of magical heart. Others say it is the monster's soul. We can't know for sure. I wonder if you monsters even know what it is.
Regardless, this hunting experience renewed my interest in magical beasts. Thus, I continued my adventures for a few years, and while subjugating, subjugating them, I also took notes. What were their habits? Did they fight amongst? themselves. Everything and anything I could find. Then, when I finally saved up enough funds, I enrolled into a an academy. I enrolled in an academy. <laughs> By presenting my research. And I want to say he continues to ramble about his life. Okay. Excellent. Cool, 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 cool. All right, let's hit play, and let's see how this level goes. Okay, so we want to go through here first, like I said. Well, not necessarily here, actually. But it doesn't hurt to get the, uh, the depositor filled up now rather than later, right? What I could do is I can get two blocks and I can push them both through portals. Oop. Go. That way I already have a portal here waiting for me when I get through. Or not a portal, a block waiting for me when I get through. So there's that door. And then I need to push through here. Portals will sometimes just push you back through them when there's a block in the way, but that's fine too. Oop. What happens if I push two blocks here now? Oh, interesting. Alright, so let's get these down here. We're gonna have to push that over here and down here. Then go through this one, in through this one, then begin moving through here. Once it's here, we have to wait. Go up, back and over. Let me make sure I have enough room to push it downward. Onto that. Honestly, these projectiles, at the rate they're moving, at the speed they're firing, they're not a huge issue. Um, they're really just there to keep in mind if a player is paying attention, right? Like, if they're not paying attention, they're just, like, standing around or, like, thinking about something too hard, uh, the player will get hit by one and have to reset the entire level, right? So it's not ideal for them. Back there we go. I'm going to once again spawn a couple so I can just push them through and have a block ready for me on both sides. This one we don't care if it's up against the wall here. I think what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and push it like that. Get one more for last one what I wanted to go into. Fine, we're gonna need it anyway. Oops, I think I'm stuck on the sign. There we go. Wait for it, and go. 
it, it feels like when I'm waiting for one to fire, it takes longer to fire. I know it's not, but it, it feels like it is. And it bugs me. Okay, so that one's gonna go on there, open up that gate. Go through here, then through here a couple of times so we can get through. Move down a little bit, there we go. And while I am just kind of back this way, just wanted to go through the portal multiple times and do stuff, I'm going to move here. So we're going to need three more. So here's this one as well. There we go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and just push this one down. I'm going to keep that one right there. Almost get hit by projectile because I forgot how fast I move. We'll just slowly move past this attack tower so I don't have to deal with it too much here. We've almost hit the conversion block. That would have been bad. We'll push that one up against the wall. And we'll get the next block over here. That will leave that one right there for now. First block, I'm going to go ahead and push it into here. And we're going to get these blocks slotted in. But don't mess this up. Okay. I do want to make sure I get this block pushed away from here. First, there we go. Okay. Oops. All right. So now I'm going to go for the top slot here. In through there, and then we can just go with this last one. Oh, again, it's gonna take about five minutes for this. Nice. Hey, okay, we're doing good. We're doing real good with time now. Previously, our levels would take like a minute or two to finish, but now five minutes. All right, excellent. So that's that level completed. If we go through. Of course, we're just gonna get the black screen in an error, so we're not gonna do that. All right, levels. Go ahead and copy this bad boy down here. And then delete this one, open up level 49, and copy that into there. Save. Excellent. All right. All the level 30s to 40 are done. We have 10 more levels left. All right. So let's look at our little sheet here. We just completed this one, which was a couple of things with portals. Just done. Um, I think we're going to remove a puzzle that uses projectiles and mirrors. I really don't want to have to add another block this late in the, the game, right? So for now, we'll just use the rest of this stuff. Uh, but the next level is going to be introducing our red slime friend. So let's go ahead and get to that. But first, we have to, of course, add a bunch more levels uh, into our thing. So first and foremost, we want to unprefab this one. And then we need to name this level... How do I name the other ones again? Okay, so just level blah blah blah. Okay. This one's going to be level 5 dash, and then we're going to leave it like that. Level name's going to be 5 dash. And then this is going to be 41. But I'm just going to leave that blank. It's going to be easier to deal with. Um, I do believe we already have our music set for this one, so we're going to copy that over to here. Excellent. And we're going to take this, and we're just going to add two here to have that be ready for us. Okay. In the end level, uh, we're going to take the current level, just drop it into there. Excellent. And then we just need to make our lovely little uh, thing here. So we have the purple room, but we need to add our red room now. So, red room. I hit cancel. All right. Red room create and we want to create that into our tile maps and we can just drag this over to here also in tile map also i want to show you guys this tile map um folder because it's, it's going to be like a mess here's the tile map folder as you can see it's like every little thing is a uh, little block is there so, cool. Anyway, 
So that's that. So now we have our, our little prefab here. Let's go ahead and we will just make our edges for the map like we always do. Start there. Go across here. I'm just going to click that one so I can just drag. I don't have to worry about it potentially going out of bounds here, there, and then over to here. We then have that one, and then that, and that, and this, and then that. There we go. All right. A level five, which is a little bit bright, I will, I will now say, um, is finished. Or our level world five area, not level five, not that. But regardless, that one is ready to go. Uh, let's just double check that the text box is uh, the correct size and stuff. It is excellent. We don't have to worry about that. Also, I just realized that this box was not unchecked, but it was always active in the beginning. We don't want that necessarily. Okay. Excellent. So we're going to go to our level Pacific Pacific prefabs. Copy this one down here and create our lovely level five prefab. We're going to then unpack this prefab and go level uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All the levels ready. Now we're just gonna go through like before, name all these so that they're all ready for us to go through and finish. So this one's gonna be level uh, 410, or 510, sorry. Level number is gonna be 50. Ooh, we're at 50. We need to do the end level as well. Level number. Okay, that one's done. We can uncheck it. Next one, level 49. 5-9, 5-9, and 49. So we can now uncheck that one as well. I might as well just like, well, let's not open them all at the same time, I guess. All right, 48. 5-8 and 48. Nice. End level, gonna be 48 there. We can then hide that one. All right, 47 now. Five, seven, and 47. That shouldn't be like that, there we go. Okay, end level had 47, perfect. Like that, open that. 46. 46. 5, 6, and 5, 6. That one, done. It said done. Check the box. All right, next. 45. 5, 5. 5. And then 45. Uncheck that, collapse that, open this, open that. Jesus Christ, this is so tedious, but you know what? It has to be done. 44, 5, 4, 5, 4. Ugh. And that one's there, okay. Now for 43. 43, 5, 3, and 5, 3. Collapse that, collapse that, open. 50, 42, sorry. 42, 2, and 2. Hide, collapse. I want to make sure. Okay. I wanted to make sure I didn't hit like 52 or 51 somewhere. That's fine. So this is going to be 41. 41. 5, 1. 
and five and one. And now we're done with naming these. Ah, oh, it's so tedious. But thank God we're done. Excellent, okay. So, if you remember correctly, we're going to now introduce the red slime, but it's going to be in a, a simple sliding puzzle. Um, there is just one problem, and this is probably going to be the rest of the stream, is this one level here. Um, if we get our, our red slime, and I forgot to make this uh, the default parent. Let's set our end point. And where is the end level point? What? How did I get all the way over there? What the fuck? Okay. That's going to be a pain in the ass later. And the spawn point is also going to be all the way up there, isn't it? Why? Oh, whatever. Okay, this is in the gooey, isn't it? Okay, hold on. No? Hmm. Yep, I don't know why the, uh, the spawn point for these are uh, like that, but okay. I'm just going to go ahead and grab all these and switch it to negative 100. Negative 100 quick. Same with the uh, end level. That way they're all centered for me when I deal with them. I don't have to go looking for them when I inevitably deal with their specific goals. So we'll do that. At this bump point I need to change again. So this bump point's gonna be up here. End level, we're just gonna move down here. So as I was saying, there's a problem with the red slime. We're gonna have him start up here. We're gonna add a couple of uh, foot blocks around the map that we're gonna navigate through just real quick to show this. And uh, we're gonna have a pressure plate here which is going to affect the red slime? How do I have this set up? It, it, I, I created this so long ago, and then I've completely forgotten what uh what happens. We trigger once. Uh, if it's an enemy, start movement. And then the enemy script start movement. Does it? Yes, okay. I just need it to be the enemy. Excellent. Okay, so yeah, we just take the red slime, one object, trigger once. Um, that's all we need to do. Okay. Okay, so now if I hit play, I'll spawn. I'll see our lovely little slime ally here. I should just have to press this switch. It'll release him, cause him to come after me. But if I go over here, You'll notice he gets stuck on a block, and then I can basically just go wherever I want to, and he's just gonna sit there until I like go to an area where the angle is such that he can do that. So that's that's the, the problem here. If I get touched, boom, I get reset. Until I'm trapped. And then I can push him because technically we were already touching here, so haha. <laughs> Aha, get that. Okay, anyway. Setting that aside for right now. Um, we might have to edit that, because I think what we wanted to have happen when the slime touches him is the... We do reset level. But does the reset level not reset the slime? Oh, right, because reset level is being called and the slime doesn't get reset. I don't have it assigned anywhere. That's right. Okay, so... Our main problem right now is that the, 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 um, the slime gets stuck on things, right? So we had previously looked at um, 2D nav mesh platforming, stuff like that. Um, 
and we'd come across some various different things, like node pathing and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Let's put this web page over here, shall we? Um, so, in the typical, I'm sorry for it's being so white here, which I think I have. No, I, had a, I thought I had a thing that you can make a web page dark, but I don't have it installed anymore, I remember. All right, so in a typical 2D crypt game, you restrict your level based on your squares. This makes it easy to process data, right? Black squares are walls, white your removable character. Our goal is to provide a mechanism that allows to calculate a yada yada yada, okay. Publish a diamond shape. Here's how I set up my unit size for this demo. Okay. So how do we do this? Okay, there's no like good explanation. Hmm. Apparently one problem with NavMesh is 2D is the coordinates. 2D uses X, Y, and NavMesh uses X, Z. A lot of people check this out. I think this was... Navigation 2D, Unity 2D Pathfinding. Navigation 2D uses Unity's built-in navigation system to make 2D pathfinding possible without any axis rotations. First, we find any amount of sprites in our game. After we add a box collider, or a circle collider to each one, put them all static. Press bake. Okay. And we have that, then use the ground scale and add it properly, add a player, add a larger player, then add a component, nav mesh agent 2D. Well, we add a new script called movement. We do that, then press play, and we can now make the player. Okay. I'm gonna go to our nav, even though we make a mesh out of this. Okay. So, <coughs> um, I've honestly forgotten how to go into the asset manager. No, package manager. Um, Unity registry. Do the navigation. Hmm. Oh, that costs $30. I'm not paying money for that. Let's see. Oh, apparently, oh, that page is missing. Blame. But Unity Nav Mesh Surface Legacy documentation. Go to current version. Let me just real quick. Now mesh. Service effect. Ah. Hmm. It still says 3D. 
يعني تمام Parents theoretical for this to work. Yep, okay, that doesn't work either. Um, blah, 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 the only thing is so we finally got to do yada, yada. Hmm. Jesus Christ. Why do people always start their fucking videos being loud as fuck? Like, give it a second for people to, like, you know, take it in. Simple 2D pathfinding in code. Okay. Let's pause my... Let's, let's watch this video and see what exactly welcome that was happening here. to another okay. episode of Unity. So, today, actually, I got a fun little thing to show you guys. 2D pathfinding. Now, originally, when you had to do pathfinding in 2D, you had to do something like A-star, okay? And that's like a huge, complex thing that people go literally to college to learn and stuff like that. But I came across the other day this amazing GitHub repo that you can just quickly, uh, you know, go and download. Um, sure. it's, it's, it's basically what it does is it takes Unity's 3D nav mesh and forces it into like a 2D scaling kind of. It's really cool, really easy to implement. You literally just go right here to this little green button here. You click on it, you click download the zip file, and to which you'll get like a little zip file over here. All you have to do is extract it to your desktop. So I have the zip file, or the zip file, yeah, it's like right here. Mm -hmm. It's already extracted, you can open it up. Okay, you see all the stuff in here. So now what you wanna do is you wanna open up your Unity project, and I'm gonna quickly get this all opened up. I just wanna say that's a very interesting um, background. If, if it reacts to like your mouse movement, that's so cool. And then you want to just, you know, in, in the Unity Hub, you go up here to new. And you yeah, it does kind of look like the guy's in a, a posh prison cell. Mine is 2020.1.2F1. And then just go ahead and make it 2D. And then name the project, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call this one test. It's not really too important. And just to be clear, you don't have to make a new Unity project to implement this. Nice okay, hold on. Before we go any further... I'm going to just, uh, the uh, hands, thank you. Oops, I skipped ahead. I'm going to just grab this from the GitHub if it's still available. We'll see. Okay. Let's grab the code. We'll download this bad boy. I'll just sort of get it and we'll kind of go through this now. So, skip ahead a little bit here. Okay. Click download the zip file, mm -hmm. and to which you'll get like a little zip file over here. All you have to do is extract it to your desktop. So I have the zip file, or the zip file, yeah, it's like right here. It's already extracted. You can open it up. Okay, you see all the stuff in here. Sure. So now what you want to do is you want to open up your Unity project, and I'm going to quickly get this all opened up. And then you want to just, you know, in, in the Unity Hub, you go up here to new, and you just click on the newest version, whatever that may be, minus 2020.1.2F1. And then just go ahead and make it 2D. Sure. And then name the project, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call this one test. It's not really too important. And just to be clear, you don't have to make a new... Skip ahead of yeah, that. Just... Yeah, project. 2D scene for Unity. Um, all you have to do to install this package is you just drag and drop the folder that uh, we downloaded for Unity. Um, all you have to do to install this package is you just drag and drop the folder that uh, we downloaded. So this folder right here, you just drag and drop that into the Unity itself. Or, well, in this case, you're going to want to show it in the Explorer. All you have to do to do that is you right-click, go to Show and Explorer right here. Make sure you right-click on your Assets folder or something. Show and Explorer. And you just double-click the Assets folder. You can just go ahead and make a folder in your Explorer. Okay. Um, this one. So in our Assets, create new folder. I'm going to call it Nav Mesh 2D. Open this up. Go to Show and Explorer. Okay, and I think we're just going to drag and drop into there. Yeah, so let me I I have another freaking window open here. Open up the Unity Game Ones desktop, and then I actually forgot what it was called. Uh, 
It's a folder. Where is it at? There we go. Navmesh plus master. I'll just drag that into there. Okay, and then. Okay. Called like pathfinding, I guess. Doesn't really matter what you call it. You could also call it packages. Open that. All you have to do with that is just either drag and drop it, or you can copy paste it. I'm going to copy paste it because I use the pathfinding for a lot of different things. Okay, so now it should be implemented into Unity. Unity is going to take a second to go ahead and like import it all. As you can see, it's doing that right now. It might take a little bit. Um, it's got a bunch of fancy stuff it's got to do. Okay, so now we have this pathfinding thing. Okay, and it's got a bunch of you know, licensing or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I know, this thing is free to use. Um, so, how do you implement it? Well, first off, you're going to want to make a tile map, which is really easy to do. You just right click, go to 2D to ground. Let's skip that a little window, bit. Which you can do by just going to window. 2D tile palette. And you just drag that and dock it someplace. It doesn't really matter where. Just go ahead and create a palette here. I'm not going to name the palette. It's not too important where I put this. I'm just going to spray this button up. No. Nope. Right, you just going over how to make a tile Got map right now. A little wall image from like, oh. Anyway, we're going to like switch to right there. Something like reset Herp. transform. You just right click. Okay. Rename it nav mesh. And then reset the transform. You just right click. Click reset. That's all you have to do. Then we're gonna make sure that you go and add component, and you can just type in nav mesh surface 2D. And that is a part of the GitHub thing that you just downloaded. Um, and you wanna add that to this game object. Um, don't do anything with this quite yet. What you need to do is go to these ground and walls tile maps that you made. Um, I'm just gonna highlight both of them and just add the same component to them both. They're, both of them get a nav mesh modifier. That means it's basically just gonna include- Okay. I'm going to, real quick, Pop that over there, open up Unity, and that way I can look at both of these things at once. We're just gonna focus here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back the video up a little bit. Just right click, click, re just maybe like one little block here, two there, something like sure. that. Okay. Something like you know that, that the AI has to navigate around. Okay, so you want to go ahead and create an empty game object, rename it Nav Mesh. And then reset the transform, you just right click, click reset, that's all you have to do. And then we're gonna make sure that you go and add component, and you can just type in nav mesh surface to reset the transform, what? Reset, okay. And that is a part of the nav mesh surface 2D, so nav mesh. Oh, that's not what? GitHub thing is go and add component, and you can just type in nav mesh surface 2D. Does it not work with this editor version, maybe? There's an agent. The rift nav mesh agent attribute. I see what he's saying here, but I don't see these are all those icons. We have the editor, nav mesh, 2D editor, 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 attribute, asset, editor, editor, editor. Okay, that's all just editor nonsense. Um, agent override, agent rotate, smooth, attributes. Builder 2D, builder state, how much component, that thing, that thing, that thing, that thing, that thing. Nav mesh surface right there, okay. If I click nav mesh and then do that. Because the script class was not found. Make sure that there is no compile errors at the name and class nav mesh. What he says, I just have to drag it in here. Script order, yo, yo. And that is a part of the GitHub thing that you just downloaded. And you can just type Hold in on. Nav. All you have to do with that is just either drag and drop it, or you can copy paste it. I'm going to copy paste it because I use the pathfinding for a lot of different things. Okay, so now it should be implemented into Unity. Unity is going to take a second to go ahead and like import it all. As you can see, it's doing that right now. It might take a little bit. Um, 
got a bunch of fancy stuff it's got to do. Okay, so um, now we have this pathfinding thing, okay? And it's got a Hold on. Copy repo asset to your folder or install a package. Create empty object in order to see an asset. Repo into your asset folder. Like that? I mean, again, nothing looked loaded. Hmm. Oh, okay. I guess now it works. So if I search here, nav mesh or nav. Okay. Apparently, it just it had to be in the thing here. Uh, let me just rename this to navigation and mesh plus right there. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Okay. A bunch of you know licensing. Um. Tyler. Let's just get back to where we were. And then reset the transform. You just right click, click reset. That's all you need to do. Now you want to make sure that you go and add component. And you can just type in nav mesh surface 2D. And that is a part of the GitHub thing that you just downloaded. Sure. Um, and you want to add that to this game object. Um, don't do anything with this quite yet. What you need to do is go to these ground and walls tile maps that you made. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to highlight both of them and just add the same component to them both. They're, both of them get a nav mesh modifier. That. So this one needs a nav mesh modifier. So nav mesh. This is navigation modifier. Let's just follow along for now. That means it's basically just going to include that's, it in that's the nav it. mesh. Um, what you're going to want to do is click override area and just make it so you mark ground as walkable. Um, and then you go to the walls, do the same thing, except you want to make walls not walkable. Now, what that's going to do is when you use the nav mesh and you click bake, it is going to allow the bake thing to, well, do its thing kind of. But I made one simple mistake. There is a weird thing you have to do. You have to rotate this object negative 90 degrees. Well, it has to be in the X direction. So right here, you just go to rotation, X, negative 90. That's all you have to do. Rotate negative 90 and then click bake. Hold on. The transform of the nav mesh object set the x rotation to negative 90. Go to rotation x negative 90. That's all you have to do. It's weird. Rotate negative 90 and then click bake. Now, as you can see, it kind of looks like a whole world of fucked up. <laughs> Whatever that was, I don't know. All you have to do is just, if you want to get rid of it, all I did was check both these boxes and click bake. Then I unchecked both of them and I click bake again. Now it doesn't look so wacky. I don't know what that Wait. was. But anyway. I am missing some things here from what he is seeing. His thing says nav mesh surface 2D. I just have navigation surface. Hmm. Pretty sure I just have a different version. I clicked the link that he had. Um, under meshes. Okay. Advanced. So I wonder if I have to, in this background, if I add a damage modifier and it's going to be walkable. And if I were, I'm just going to grab the tile palette and do like this. Okay, let me click the nav mesh and click bake. Again, I'm not seeing anything happening. So now what you do is 90 degrees. Well, it has to be in the X direction. So right here, you just go to rotation, X, negative 90. That's all you have to do. Rotate negative 90 and then click bake. Now, as you can see, it kind of looks yeah, like it's not a working for me. fucked up. <laughs> Whatever that was, I don't. Um. Let's see. Let's look at this thing. Let's let's ignore this guy for a second here, right? And so, add navigation surface component to an empty object, and add 
Okay, so we need to add that, which was a nav uh, mesh or collect source. We do this thing here. Okay, so navigation collects sources to the component after it. Click rotate surface to x, y. I do not see that here anywhere. Um, you face towards the standard 2D camera. So I'm assuming what I just did here will do that. Oh, no, there's rotate surface to x, y. No. OK. I'm assuming if I hit, make that 0, and then I hit that. It, OK, it does it for me. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. OK. And then it is saying, add a navigation modifier component to scene objects. Or to scene objects, so like this one here, for example. Um, and then override area. And in navigation surface, then hit bake. And it does that. OK. Yeah, that's better. Um, Let's hit clear. And we're going to go to the background. I'm just going to ning, 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 ning. Can I? No, I can't paint with an empty thing, can I? Can I? Mm hmm. Where is this tile map? What's all up here, huh? What if I take this background tile map and I just make it go like here in this bounding box, right? No, this is the thing. Of course, it looks just god awful if we're looking at it like that. And then if we hit in our nav mesh, if we hit bake now, we'll see a huge amount of area, right? So I think that's because of this, unfortunately. <sighs> Ooh, he, uh, no, I have to X, negative 90. That's all you have to do. Rotate negative 90 and then click right here. Now, as you can see, it kind of looks like a whole world fucked up. <laughs> Whatever that was, I don't know. All you have to do is just, if you want to get rid of it, all I did was check both these boxes and click bake. Then I unchecked both of them and I click bake again. Now okay. it doesn't look so wacky. I don't know what that was, but anyway. So now you can see this as it's basically just a giant, like, you know, nav. So compress, compress bounds. Um, excellent. So I, I'm assuming if I were to take this and add a navigation modifier to it and have it be not walkable, go back in here, hit clear, then hit bake. Okay. So it makes that area not walkable. Interesting. Okay. So, um, interesting. Okay. And if I just take these, for example, and I were to go and add a modifier, do this, they're not walkable, go back into the nav mesh, we can then hit bake one more time to do that. We can then, I think if I just hit well, I, I don't hit play yet. I need to add something to the red slime that will allow it to move, right? Um, let's see here. Implemental world bound count. How do I make it so that the Especially you've seen normal 3D. Um, Monster. The agents will be able to walk around this. So now I'm going to show you guys how to go ahead and make something traverse this so called nav mesh. Um, we're just going to go ahead and create a 2D object, create a sprite. We're just going to name this, like, I don't know, AI. Sure. Sure. Doesn't really matter. Reset the transform, um, reset, and then we're going to give them a little sprite. We'll give them a knob. Yeah, I like knobs. Okay. All right. What can I say? Um, we're going to make him, I don't know, three times as big, something like that. I'm gonna open this up and do it. He should be, where is he? Why is he not appearing in the scene? He should be appearing. Oh, it's cause he's hidden. Ha, that makes sense. Yeah, he was hidden behind the camera and stuff. Okay, anyway, we're gonna give him the nav mesh agent component. Um, and then we don't really need this to do one? anything with this. Yep. Okay, I mean, 
over time, you guys are going to be tweaking these values, but I'm not here to really go through that. I'm just here to show you guys how this works in very simple stuff. So we're just going to do like simple AI movement. That's what we're going to call the script that we're going to make on him. So go ahead and make a new script. I think I'll just call whatever you want. Mine's just going to be called simple AI movement. Um, it should just get added straight to him just like that. Good. Now, if you were to look at the GitHub page, and I just had it open, thank you. Thank you, Visual Studio, for ruining it. If you were to look at the GitHub page, you can, you got to scroll down. And it, it says that there is a little problem with the um, nav mesh agent itself. So you have to make sure that you, in the start function of every AI unit or whatever, um, you put this code right here. So we're just going to copy paste this into the start function of our thing. Um, it, what it basically does is, I'm assuming it's... Just, uh, I won't be able to copy paste that, but I can have it, I can just type it here. So var agent equals git component nav mesh agent like that and then agent dot update rotation equals false and then agent dot update up axis equals false like that stops the 2d like image from rotating rather than just going towards whatever um, so you just want to copy paste that in. You're also going to want to do at the top here, you want to include the library, the unity engine dot AI. Or it did it, baby. And that's going to get rid of our little error there for the nav. Or it did it for me. I don't know. Um, so now what we're going to want to do is have some sort of target. doesn't really matter what. So we're going to do a serialized field for a transform. So it's going to do target. Already got that. And I believe that's all we need to do now that's in the update function. This is not, this is not. Um, like, an, like an actual good, um, efficient way to do this. But I'm doing this just to show you that this is how easy it is to set this up. So now what we're going to do is we just want to use the variable agent, which we apparently need to quickly make a agent. So nav mesh agent. Um, we're going to call this agent, not agent, agent. And then we're just going to replace this right here with agent. Because we want to make sure we cache that. We don't want to be doing git component every frame. That's not good. Anyway, so now we have this. So we'll do agent dot set desk. That is what he's saying. And then in update, he is saying we want to do agent dot. The nation. And then we're just going to feed in the target. So you just do the target dot position. So now, this AI is going to be moving. Are you guys ready for this? This is fancy stuff. We just did it. We got okay. a moving AI pathfinding in like four lines of code. Well, unless you want to count all of it. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six lines of code. But it's basically four. Um, hopefully this works. You're going to want to make another object in here, just an empty game object. Reset, transform, and then click on your AI and just drag in the object that you just made. That's basically your target guy that you're going to be dragging around. Um, Fingers crossed this hopes first try. Hopes first try, yeah. So we're tossing this over here. I can yeah. see what he's doing. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, let's see if this works. Um, oh, don't maximize on play. Okay, so I'm going to click on the game object. Currently, he's not moving, but if I were to move it, as you can see, this thing is following my cursor around, and he navigates around the walls very smoothly. It runs very efficiently. As you can see, he stops, turns around, goes around the wall. Nice and smooth. Cool. And that is honestly some of the simplest pathfinding AI you could ever implement into a 2D space. Let me okay, so essentially we have to do this. So where do I actually change the destination here? So we use the rigid body. So I wonder if I just... If I just take this and I place it here, and I were to do this. Hold on, before I do that, let's just target a position right here, okay? No. Y y y y y y yes? Yes. I think that's all I have to do. So target destination dot position like that. Let's see what happens if I do this.
does it say? It does give me options for speed and stuff here. I wonder if instead of using a rigid body, I would want to do this stuff. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll test out the red slime key. Oh, I compiler errors. Internal build error. Backend code exited with that. What does that mean? What does that mean? Um, Unity internal build system error. Negative one zero seven three seven four one eight one nine. Ask on Unity forums are the much better responses. Reddit and so forth. Often happens when getting close to RAM limits, for example, when working on clients or. Um, I was about to reinstall Windows from last trick. I checked my system tray and there was a RAV endpoint protection virus. I uninstalled that. Also unchecked read only on my project folders. Problems got what? Okay, let's ignore that discussion. And let's see. I don't know how, but I, I don't know how, but as I remove or add test framework to package manager, it's solving my problem. Test framework. We need to, what does that say? Until all our operations are finished. Okay. Just wait for it to update. This error does not help me at all. <laughs> um, what if I enclose in parentheses the error that I'm getting? This is the exact bug I'm getting. Um, and if we scroll down to the helpful bits, same problem, same problem. Fixed it by completely removing the B folder located in project library B. Strange using a tiny character build on What? What was the time I run into a strange compilation like this, deleting the entire library folder and reloading the project cleans things up? Hmm. What if I what if I just reload it? The thing I install this nav mesh thing. So I might just not do nav mesh if it doesn't work. I might just not uninstall all that and you know, deal with that nonsense. People are also saying delete the library folder. So if I just hit play. Is it one of those stupid, like, graph errors? Oh god, he's fast. Oh god, he's fast. Oh god, he's so fast. 
What happens if I get like right next to a block? Oh, he touches me. He touches me so bad. Oh god, oh god, okay. Gotcha. So at least we know that that error is just a bogus thing. I just got to relaunch the thing for. Okay. Cool. Um. Right. So, what if I just void out those two lines? Does that help anyway? Yeah, I got, I got the mad mesh working. So, it's gonna, it's gonna, yeah, you. It's gonna be a little odd to use, but now if I do this, so he just continues to come after me. And if, if I just like stop here, and just touch me. Okay. So we just need to set up some things in the guy here. Basically. Um so speed, I'm pretty sure the slime moves at three. So that's fine. Um, auto braking. What does this mean? Agent will avoid overshooting the destination point by slowing down in time. No, we don't want that. Uh, obstacle avoidance. Radius 1.3. The minimum distance to keep clear between the center of this agent and any other agents or obstacles nearby. We're going to go 0.5. We're going to keep it tight. Um, height. Uh, 1. 0 0.5. 0 0.7 there. What, 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 what is this? This is like the, the length there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 0 0.7. 0 0.4. 0 0.3. There we go. 0 0.3. And then we want to go 0 0.6. 0 0.5. There we go for that. Quality. Avoidance reduces the chance of agents overlapping, but it is slower to compute. And yada yada. Let's, let's make it good quality. We don't need to have such good thing. Angular speed. Maximum speed or turning when following a path. Let's leave that for now. Stopping distance. Stop within a distance from the target position. Off that. So let's go ahead and save that with those changes made. Um, and then we will hit play and just see what happens. We can even tweak some settings as we're doing stuff here. So as we can see, if we get closer now, he really will really clip those edges, but he'll still try to come after us. He does get a little stuck there, so I might want to change the box to be actually a little bit bigger than him. We open this guy back up. Um, so let's go with like 0 0.4 is going to be 0 0.6 because I think before it was like just inside of his hitbox area. So if we do that, it should work properly, uh, at least I think. So we'll do that. Um, how do traverse off mesh? That means area mask everything. What does this do? The agent paths plans a path and moves only through the selected nav mesh types. So walkable is the only thing we want him to do. Uh, perfect. Let's try this again. Actually, I don't think I hit save. There we go. Let's try it one more time. He still gets stuck. Okay. Hmm. What if I do make it five and seven then? Try that, then base offset. Okay, that's what that does. Uh, negative 0 0.1. Yeah, like 
what, what was one? So one, one, one point one. We could try that. That way it's, you know, below the guy as well. It's not just on the bottom. Um, let's change the angular speed to like 60 and just see how that looks. I'm not sure why he's getting stuck like that. Oh god. Um, what if I just have a 3 acceleration? Maximum acceleration of an agent as follows units per second. I mean, ah, I didn't hit save. Let's do seven and then if we do that. Let's give this a try. See what happens. Okay. So he'll start a little slower, but he'll then start following me at a Really brisk, decent pace. If I get on the other side of this brick from him, he does get stuck still. Let me just hit reset. That's just huge. So I think it conforms to my like thing here. Oops. Maximum distance to keep clear between the center of this object, center of this agent, and any other objects or op nearby obstacles. So if I do 1.5 or 1.6, for example, I could do that. I think. Let's change the speed to 2. Angular, let's go 60. Change this back to good quality. Um, we just want walkable again. We want to uh, do, it'll ignore all other agents for which this number is higher. Okay, so if I have multiple things, it'll like, yeah, the blocks are marked as obstacles. So it should be missing them. Uh, auto braking we want off because we, we want the slime to like slam into our current slime. We don't want it to mess around there. Uh, acceleration, let's leave that at three. Let's hit save and test it out again. And if it does get stuck, it gets stuck. But we'll see. Okay, so here it comes. It's gonna come and follow us. I mean, it does get stuck, but at least it like it tries to, you know. Get around it. I'm not sure what is causing. Let's hit pause. I'm gonna go back. Select our slime character. Let's change that to 120. Let's see if it, if him having a higher thing here helps. No. Okay. What if we just set this to better quality? Okay. So it looks like the quality is what. Uh, I guess not. Apparently not. Huh. So I'm not sure what is causing it to, uh... Like, get stuck like this. I mean, if it's getting stuck like this, I might as well just not use the nav mesh, because... Like, my other thing was working just fine as well. It was still getting stuck behind stuff. It does try a little bit harder to avoid them, though. But if I literally just like wait on one side of it, this, I can trap it. Oh god, you got me. Okay, anyway. That was, uh, bad. So... <laughs> I 
if we look at the nav mesh agent here, we should also look at this. So if we're looking at him and whatnot, we need a way to have him be affected by conveyor belts or from now on, we just don't use conveyor belts with this line. Hmm. Can you have this be negative? No, that should be positive. Okay. Well, I guess we since the the only thing that the slime uh, really does is use the conveyor change. We could just not use conveyors around the red slime. And then just uh, ignore the rest of that. So I think that's what we'll do. So we will just ignore these lines of code. I'm, I'm leaving commented out, actually. That's probably the best uh, thing to do here. Also, let's get some more music playing, shall we? That song goes over. Let's just. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna ruler up there. Okay. So we have the slime moving. It's. Not ideal. It'll be fine. I trust it. Okay. We have our, our little slime that took time. Like I said, it's going to take a little bit. So yeah, if we look at the nav mesh, we can see these are uh, surrounded by an area that they cannot get into. Affected agents all. Okay. They're said to be not walkable, so that's a thing. So if I want to add more stuff, I can, but also if I delete these and then look at the nav mesh, there's a hole there, so we'll do that later. So let's go to the nav mesh, we'll hit clear to get rid of everything. And uh, yeah, I think I'm actually going to remove the nav mesh from that as well. I don't think I need it. I think if I just go nav mesh and bake again, that's the walkable area that is within the bounds of this little thing, right? So. Yeah, that works. Okay, if there's anything we can we can add later, that's fine. So let's actually make this a uh, level, shall we? Okay, so we're going to have a basically uh, thing here. Of course, there's a thing here. What am I talking about? All right, let's go ahead and add in a kind of wall. Uh, force the player to go through uh, this pressure plate. And so once they step on the pressure plate, the red slime will be released, and they have to step on the pressure plate. So, bam. And then while they're doing that, we're going to make a, a simple sliding puzzle is the plan. We want to have the player just slide stuff around. We don't want it to be too complex as the player is doing their thing, you know, because that would be just hard if it's the first time they're doing it, right? So, it's a very simple sliding puzzle, I think, would be uh, good. So we don't want to add too many walls and stuff. Uh, what we could do, though, is add uh, some pitfalls, Darn it, why is this not set to default parent? There we go. Some pitfalls with the spawn point here. Um, I think the only problem we're going to have is with the slime. If it hits that, it's going to be sent back to that spawn point as well. But I think that should be fine. We'll, we'll see. We'll test it. Um, actually, let's just test it now before we get too into it. Shall we? 
Boom. Spawn. You release the slime and it, uh... Sudden destination can only be placed on an active agent that has a nav mesh? What? Oh, because I didn't... I haven't baked the... Yeah, I'm stupid. Now let's do this. Jeez. Now it's following us. If we just go around this hole here, we can lure directly in. It looks like I actually spawned back in its spawn point. Or it's getting glitched, and because there's no nav mesh area there, it is uh, just teleporting the closest area. Because it seems like it's coming down from here. But at the same time, the, the original spawn area is like right there for it. So if the hitbox from the slime is here, that would make sense, right? Let's just, uh, let's use the step mechanism here. What does it teleport right there? Okay. Hey, Pitfall, can I see your code for a second? I just need to... need to see... I didn't realize I still had a debug there. The enemy is a player, we want to do level spawn. Okay, so yeah, it's spawning it at the level, but it's not spawning it where it should. It's fine, I guess. Um, what we could do is a enemy spawn location. Like that. And then we just have to add another little thing for it. Which we have to do anyway, because we have to for the level reset. So it has to update every single prefab that uh, is inside of a previous level, so this is taking just a minute to do. God dang. Okay, so now, if we were to create an empty object, we're going to call the enemy spawn. I'm going to put that up near the red slime for safekeeping. We can then do this. And now, if I hit play and we do that, it would go here. Whatever. Also, um... I guess there's not enough room for it to go in there with a nav mesh. Am I able to make it tighter? Hmm. Whatever. Anyway, uh, it has been three hours. Usually at the two hour mic, I, I take a break, stretch and whatnot, but I kind of got into the nav mesh thing. So let us take, <clears throat> hello, camera? I just realized my, my camera turned off. Camera, you okay? Um, did it die? Did it go the way of old yeller? Huh? Which of these cables is my camera? I think this is the camera, yeah? Let's just yank it. Uh. Was that the camera? Can't tell. It didn't turn back on. Hey, camera! Let me switch to my projection screen here. A second. Hey, camera. Camera, camera, camera. Um. This tracking is active, but I don't see the camera on. Camera off. Camera on. Camera off. Camera on. Hmm. Oh, oh, we're back. Hello. Hi. I don't know what that was about. That was weird. The uh, camera just decided to uh, not wanna be on, I guess. Anyway, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go stretch and stuff. Y'all just do the same, get a drink, all that. I actually gotta get a drink too, I ran out. Uh, so we'll be right back.
I have returned. Hello, hello. In just one second, I want to check one thing real quick. And then we will turn to business as usual. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Ah, don't. That's a thing, I suppose. All right. Cool. I got a package delivered. It wasn't outside of my door, apparently. I put it in the damn parcel locker outside, so I'm gonna have to go grab that after this is done. Ah, chocolate bars. Luckily, uh, it's not too hot outside today. If it was like 90 or something, I'd be like, I gotta go get it right now, but it's only... 76. So, usually they're shipped with some cooling things, so I think 30 minutes uh, will be fine. All right. Let's beat the shit out of this level. And I think we'll end things there. <laughs> For today, anyway. Okay. So, like I said, I want it to be just a simple sliding puzzle. Nothing too crazy. Um... So let's make it crazy as fuck. Nah. All right, but let's get a let's get a couple of blocks. I'm just gonna place these randomly. And we can do one over here. Here. Sometimes going random with it uh, kind of helps to just envision a, a location, right? I was like, sure, you could. Oh, hey, thanks, Epic Games. You have a free game for September 7th. Cool. Go ahead and close that. Okay. Also, I selected the wrong one here. All right. We're going to have a depositor. It's going to take some stuff in. Let's grab the depositor and put in the spawn point. It should not matter for the slime, for the red slime, because... It's sort of been a little thing here, and for the player to get the slime to go in here, he would have to go in here anyway as well. So that's fine. All right. So. Should I just throw a bunch of pitfalls and, like, stuff just randomly around the area? Like this, and then, like, over here, and over here. Here, over here, oops, not there, there, one there, one like right here. Then we can also do red blocks, like here, over here, over here, there, one over there, over here, just completely random. Like that. And then we could make it so one, two, three, four, five, all five of the blocks have to um, go into the depositor. So you don't have any room to have a non. Uh, you, you can't fill a pitfall basically so on this one you can push over here down to here over to here down to there into there that one you just push down and over that one just down and over that one down over down over this one down over down over very simple but you do have an enemy coming at you so i think what we can do is let's grab all of these including the pitfalls and we want to add a nav mesh modifier override area we're going to say these aren't walkable now, I'm not sure how this will look, given how much space everything's going to take up. But let's hit the nav mesh and hit bake. Okay, so it looks very bad. Also, I forgot a pitfall, apparently. Let's undo that, undo that, undo that, undo that. Okay. We'll leave the pitfalls open. The movable blocks, we will add the modifier to, however. There we go. Go back up to the nav mesh. We'll clear it and bake it one more time. As you can see, now we have more options to take. Okay. So let's give this the good old college try. 
And I'm actually gonna do some of this stuff here real quick. So we have the enemy, enemy spawn. Um, why not? Might as well. I don't think we're gonna add anything else to this pitfall here. The depositor. Goes there. Pitfalls, and we got a pressure plate. Right like that. Don't have to worry about the new pool block. Ow, kind of. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So hit that. Boop. I just need the block spawns here. One, two, three, four, five. We just got to take all of these. And why is the thing spawning up? Why? What is what is happening here? Something got messed up somewhere. Something seriously got messed up somewhere. Why is this at a hundred hundred? What in the hell? What is what is this? Why is this up here? What 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 is this? Oh fuck me, I think I understand. I think all of these levels were inside that. I think that's part of the reason. What is, what is this? It's the camera, right? Oh, this doesn't feel right. My streams preview just decided to die when I did that. I don't know why. So this is at zero zero. Um, the endpoints are also here. I don't. I have no idea what the hell's going on. What happened to level five one and the rest of them, where it's now sitting at? Here, right there. What? Why is that a hundred, a hundred? I, I don't. This is gonna cause issues down in the future, I think. So I just have it at zero, zero, zero. I hit play. Yeah, like I thought. It's not because of that, was it? I 
Okay, is it like that for every single level? It is. Why? What the fuck? Let me load the game world. That's not right, though. What? This is its own object. So... I'm so confused. I'm just so confused. Okay, let me see here. So something is like up here. It's causing an issue. Is it the nav mesh? Is it these tile maps? What is causing... Hmm. There's a, what is causing that? I, I, don't, I don't understand why the zero, zero point is up here. If I add this up into here, it looks fine. What the actual fuck? the difference do not tell me that I'm going to have to like redo all of these there's ain't no way Why are you here? There is nothing up in this area that would be like, oh yeah, our, our selector is here. Nothing. Why isn't it zero? No. Oh. If it's zero, zero, it's, it's down there now. I mean, camera hasn't moved at all. I'm pretty sure when we spawn in a, a level 5 1, is if we look at the script for the end level, there's level script. I think it's a game world manager. Level spawn, it yeah, sets it to go to level 000. zero, zero. Or, Point zero 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 is the transformation position. Which is not going to work. Because at zero zero, the bubble's just not there.
Like, the only thing that's different is a nav mesh, but it should not be causing this issue. Everything else, well, this I can just reset to, to that. Everything else is at the correct thing. Probably just except for these because they're also off by that much. Just why is the level GUI not at zero zero zero? Weird. I might have to check if um, ET, oh, I can't check ET here. Oh, I should be able to, right up there. ET, oh, my caps lock was on, dot, uh, current level is greater than or equal to 41, else. What, 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 is the, what is that number? Um, let's open up the event tracker. I forget what I have here. Um, it is... I guess... Fuck. Next level. Son of a bitch. <sighs> Game object love it. I was passing in this thing, right? So I could just check instead of that, I could do if level dot get component level script dot level number is greater than or equal to 41. That We can do this, where we do 100, 100, apparently. It's a really stupid way to do this. Like, it's not finding the root cause, it's just like, saying, okay, well, I don't know what the root cause is, so... Shrug. It's like putting a band-aid on, like, a, a wound. Sure, it hides the wound, but the uh, wound's still thing in there. I'll just do that. Fuck it. Okay. Well, let, let's just go back to making the level now. Okay, so we have the, the nav mesh. There it is. We were, uh... I forgot what we were doing that led to all this. Uh... What were we doing, actually? I think I just like saw that and like went off on a tangent about it, but um... Oh wait, right, we were trying to assign the values into here, or we were trying to make these go on to the blocks, so when I get 100, and I get 100, ugh, pain in the ass going forward. Okay, now at least they're there. Again, why that's down there, I don't. All right, so let's play test this and see what happens. Because remember, when the slime hits you, it resets all your progress. So we're gonna do that, and we're gonna real quick dip away from him. That's crazy. It uh, it really doesn't like that, does it? Well, that's unsatisfying. I think it's stuck there because if we look at the nav mesh, um, 
There's nothing there for it to go on, right? What's the override vector? Does that do anything? No. How do I make it like tighter? Also, I think I hit caps lock again. Uh, yep, I did. Um, all objects include everything. Um, I just want to do the default layers. Render meshes, tackle collisions, um, advanced. The size controls how local the changes to the world are. Small tile size. I can do that. Okay, I can see a little bit more now, but it's not that. What if I just do one? Let's undo that. Take it. Okay. What about the voxel size? Is how accurately nav mesh generates the level geometry? Voxel size of two to three is good per agent. Let's just hit two, and then whoa. Number of voxel per agent. Too small. Agents may not avoid walls. What if I just hit big? Okay, that fucked that up. Okay, 0 0.1 then. How about that? 0 0.0001. Hmm. Okay. Let's just leave it how it was then. So, okay, so the problem is they can't go around these stupid ones because they're there. Um, hmm. As I can just get rid of those blocks. So which ones are you? You. 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 I guess that one needs to be getting rid of. Or I can move it up to here. Like that. And this one I can move up to here. And then if we go to the nav mesh and we hit clear and we bake it again, we can see that now it's all over there. I wish I could like change the buffer size. Is there a way to do that? Let me, let me, let me go to Unity. Unity, can you change the buffer around nav mesh? Do this. I do remember that the slime can as well push blocks, so we need to be careful so he doesn't slip them into a, a pitfall here. It's still so annoying that it gets caught on that stuff. Maybe just remove block obstacles entirely. Get rid of those. Get, get them the fuck out of here. Now if I just build a nav mesh, fake. It can go everywhere. I don't have to worry about it running into shit, right? And then for, uh, for prefabs, I can just uh, do some more stuff. Actually, I might not even need these pitfalls, to be honest. What if I just hide all of these? And then... So, we see the slime moving around. Look at him move in his little cage. That's supposed to happen. Okay. Well, 
It's not works. I think we should actually move him and his spawn uh, over here, perhaps. Also, his spawn is also not in the correct location. Because I forgot to set where it was at. Uh, I'm just gonna change this to four. This one also be four. There we go. Okay, so now it should spawn in the same. Not what I meant. There. Well, that's not gonna work either. So zero point three, I guess. go okay so now it should spawn properly also we have to go in here and okay that's fine so now that we we have actually just nothing to block us um maybe we should add a couple extra blocks let's five six let's go to seven lucky number seven um one here and we'll do one up here as well why not excellent okay so we need to select our thing here and add two more these and two more block spawns as well the problem is i forgot which ones i added i think i added this one and that one yeah let me just check. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, okay, that's done. All right. Let's test this out now. Now that the slime is not right next to it, it's not as you know, crazy. So he's going to get out and start coming towards us. We'll be able to see that he's, oh, moving a block for us. What a nice little guy. But is he actually nice? No, not really. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. He came at me hard. Oh god, this is so much harder than I thought it was going to be. Like, sure, with like obstacles and stuff, he can like just get put in like a pit. But Jesus Christ, let's see if I can get him to like push these blocks. Like the other way though. The other way though, sir. Come on. I can do like this. I can like push a block together. Yeah! Friend! 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 Nice. I'll just go ahead and push this down while he's over there. The real problem is going to be getting him to um, fuck off long enough for us to push the blocks into the hole. I think. Oh god. He gets so close. Slowly but surely we're moving the blocks. Oh, he just moved that one so far away. It's hard to get any distance with him, is the problem. Then let's juke him up! <laughs> okay, thanks for nudging that down a little bit further, sir. Thank you. But it is possible we just have to, like, juke him a lot. I might lower his speed even further than it is now. So that way we, uh... Oh, no time for that. No time for that. Get away from my blocks, man. Okay, let's lure him up to this corner. That might be a good choice. Get in there. Oh, no! Okay, so the, the thing is here, he does not stop moving. Um, so is there a... If we look at the script here... The red slime is moving equals true, but when we reset him, um, reset slime is moving as false. Uh, he should not be allowed to move. Also, let me just real quick. 
the nav mesh. He should be in the nav mesh, so I don't know why he was spawned up there. Let me just get touched by him real quick. I want to see where he spawns exactly. Okay, no, he does get spawned down there. Perfect. So I gotta figure out how to make him stop moving. Um, agent dot stop? What is this? Uh, what did it say? It said set is stopped to true instead. Is stop equals true? So I do like that. Let's see what happens now. If we get hit. It's all about learning the extra nuances of the various scripts and stuff that we have now. Okay. We're gonna hit this. He gets unleashed. We get tagged. So his is stopped does trigger um there. But he does like have like a delayed stop thing. So I think what we need to do is when we reset the slime, we want to have this happen. I'm doing it twice because I want to make sure it stops. And I'm not sure if in the update it's going to keep moving again. Right. So we get tagged, it stops. We should be able to release it again, but it stopped is all. So we have to, in here, when we do update, we need to do agent dot is stopped equals false, like that, every single time. Great, that's ideal. Okay. And also, he was way too fast, so we want to make him slower as well. Let's open up our, our boy down here. And, all right, this speed was only supposed to be one. I forgot. Okay. It's a lot better now. Had me. Oh, oh, man. I'm going to change where reset enemy occurs. It's going to happen first. That way, hopefully, when the, the level triggers, um, the enemy stops immediately. 
I don't know if that'll help. We can check it out though. Um, I think we just set acceleration to two. Save it. Save. Okay. Let's see now if we get touched. He still slides. Why does he slide? It's because of his the rigid body. What if we do like a mass of 50? Will he still be able to move or will it cause issues? He can still move. It doesn't slow any quicker. The red slime. Um, where's your rigid body? Linear drag, let's go like 80. Velocity doesn't actually change when he's there, huh? He just keeps sliding when he's reset. I mean, I guess it's fine. It's, it's okay, I guess. But it's just sort of annoying. See, I can get rid of all these pitfalls. These pitfalls aren't going to do anything for us here. Um, yeah, they're just going to cause issues, really. I think as it is now, this is a fine level, because you have to, like, avoid getting hit by the slime. Maybe touches you once, you're screwed. So I think this will be the end of the level. So let's go ahead and make the messages. Ooh. Oh, you've made it this far. Sorry, I was rambling. I got lost in my recollection. But look, another slime thread for you. It is a different color, though. Well. Well, maybe you should go and give it a nice hello. We'll do that. Okay. As soon as we hit the pressure plate, when releases, those stuff, nice. I mean, we know we can beat this level. It's just a matter of slow pacing. Hmm, I know we just double check. Nothing else here has extra stuff, right? Okay. Good. That'll be level 5 1. <clears throat> Excuse me? Loading? Loading, loading? Is there like a pop-up somewhere I'm not seeing, or? I don't know what's going on. I just clicked on the world's, or the level's prefab thing here, and now it's all just gone to shit. I can click this screen. No, I can't, I guess, Never mind. Is that just like Windows in general freaking at me, or? Oh, it seems like it's specifically... 
Unity. Unity hub, nothing there. Yeah, I can't. Do anything here. Um, hmm. Well. Yeah, we're fucked. Great, cool. Uh, I guess we're gonna just wrap things up here. I don't even know if that switched when I clicked the, the switch thing here. I don't even know if my avatar is doing weird stuff because I cannot see the damn thing. So I'm just gonna wrap things up here for now, everyone. Uh, does the task manager have any weird information? Nope, everything's fine. Uh, <clears throat> right, so. We uh, got our red slime added. We have that all working out well and good. Um, I gotta say, I don't know about the snap mesh thing. Things really went to hell after I added it in. So that might be causing some problems. Um, I'll see if I can get the level to recover from this uh, and save and whatnot. But next time, we might just completely remove the stupid nav mesh agent and use our previous thing that we were using anyway. Since I'm just getting stuck on obstacle, you know what? We are going to remove the nav mesh. I'm going to remove it at the end of this. After I'm done streaming, I'm going to remove the nav mesh. Also, my camera turned off again, too. I, I don't know what's going on. It, it really does not like this for some reason. So yeah, going to remove the nav mesh. We're going to go back to our previous thing that we were using, which worked fine. It just couldn't navigate around properly, which is fine. We're, we're not even able to navigate properly with a nav mesh. So I'm just going to get rid of it. And then when we come back on, what is today, Tuesday, Thursday? Today's Thursday. When we come back on Monday, we'll knock out a couple more levels. Tuesday comes around, we'll knock out a couple more, maybe get to level 50. And uh, on Wednesday, I do believe we will have it completed at least all the levels i think i don't know we'll see how much craziness we go through here but one more ding for you there we go all right we're done here everyone thanks for hanging out and i'll see you all next time bye bye